All right, so I'm on a quest to improve the trigger on the uh, SS-12 or Hatfield style of shotguns. And there's a couple videos on YouTube of how uh, you can back out the spring for the hammer and uh, improve the feel of the trigger a little bit. And I think that's one thing that's going to help, but uh, a lot of the issues is just with the machining. So probably going to have to take out the, uh, the sear and the hammer and uh, do some polishing. Definitely, I think we're going to have to remove some material. Um, but first, we're going to start with the hammer modification or uh, just back in this, this screw out pretty much. There's not really any modification. What you're going to want for this, um, Phillips head screwdriver, half inch socket on an extension, and um, flat head screwdriver, of course. And then what I'm going to do is I have a bunch of shotgun shells with uh, just primers. So just the primer and the wad. And what we're going to do with this is keep backing out the hammer spring until we get a uh, reliable ignition, but we're not too light. Uh, and we get, and we get a, a better trigger pull. So, because one of the problems, not just the trigger pull, but pulling the hammer back uh, for children can be extremely difficult. So, I'm going to go ahead and uh, break this in half so it'll fit on the camera a little bit easier. First thing you want to do, take those two Phillips head screws out and then uh, loosen that bolt inside. It's already been done. Next, what you want to look at is uh, this section right here. So this is the hammer spring, just a piece of spring steel. It's not an actual like coil spring like you would think. Um, and then right here is the tension screw. So when I first opened this thing up, this screw was sticking out about two threads down here at the bottom. So I went ahead and loosened it up just a bit. And um, it already, I mean, huge, hum humongous difference pulling the hammer back. I mean, I think my wife could definitely do that. Um, so the problem with backing this screw out too much is um, you're going to have issues. The hammer's not going to have enough uh, strength to push that firing pin. So typically what you would do is loosen the screw, go shoot the shotgun. Loosen the screw some more, shoot it again. And keep doing that until uh, you get reliable ignition with the uh, trigger pull that you want or the hammer pull uh, that you want. So what you can do by having a bunch of empty shells, or by empty shells I mean with the crimp cut off and everything dumped out, you can do it here on the bench. So you're gonna, definitely going to want to put some ears on um, because it's not going to be quiet just because it's a primer. Um, but we're going to loosen the spring and keep loosening it until uh, it feels good enough and it still sets a primer off. One thing you want to be aware of is you don't want to back the screw out too much that it's not catching uh, enough threads because then you risk the tension of the uh, spring here stripping the threads out and pulling the screw out. So let's go ahead and uh, get started here. See how far we can back out the screw. We've got it backed up pretty far, but uh, still not enough to register on the trigger pull gauge. Man, that is a piece of cake to pull back now. Let's see if it's enough to give me a trigger pull reading. Finally, look at that, seven and a half pounds. So, if that will, if a seven and a half pound trigger pull will reliably set off a 12 gauge shell, then I'm gonna leave it just like that. I think seven and a half is good enough because like I said, I'm gonna polish up the internals in here. Um, so, let's give this a shot. I've got some, uh, let's see, what do we have here? A state. And I think these are federal, maybe. I really don't even know. Let me pull these out here and dump out the gunpowder. Take the wads out. Only thing you want in here, the only thing you want in here is a primer. You want any gunpowder or anything in here. Um, if you're not experienced with this kind of thing, don't do this.
All right, let's see. Okay, so it looked like at a seven and a half pound trigger pull, it's not enough to set off the primer. So let's do a quarter turn. Actually, let's do a half turn. Try it again. Still not enough. Another half turn. Still not enough. It's just barely touching that. Half turn. Let's try another one just in case I damaged that primer already. There we go. So that one went off. This primer may be damaged from all those light strikes, so we'll try another one here. Do it with the estate. I'm going to back it off half a turn. Cool. Let's back it off even more. And you definitely want to try this with a couple different loads. Any loads that you think you may be using, or any of their common factory loads. Cool. So that works. <clears throat> I'm going to try one of these other shells here. No problem. Let's see what I have that trigger pull set at. That feels like it may be the original 7.5 pounds that we had just a second ago. Yep. Seven and a half pound trigger pull. I think that's good enough. The average person can pull a seven and a half pound trigger. Just to be safe, I'm gonna go ahead and do a few more of these. Just to make sure everything is good. Cool. Easy money. Looks like we're getting a nice good primer hit on there. And, uh, I'm happy with that. So seven and a half pounds. Definitely a whole lot better. Um, I think we must have been at like 14 pounds or something before. Because um, it wouldn't even register on my trigger pull gauge. And it was crazy, crazy hard. So anyway, we'll try that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put some Loctite on this screw. What I'm going to do is I'm going to count the threads that are uh, exposed here and then put some Loctite on it. And then the next thing is to take the action apart and polish up the internals. Okay, so we've got our hammer spring set to where we want it. I, uh, I've marked the screw and marked the receiver tang here where to tighten it back up to. Next thing we're going to do is uh, mess with the internals here. So need to take off the barrel from the receiver just to make it easier to work on. Nothing's pressed into place, don't worry about it. Just a flathead screw. Once you get it loose, you can push it from the other side. And they'll come out just like that. We can remove our barrel assembly, set it to the side, and we've got our receiver. So you want to make sure that you remove the hammer spring before you start. So take the hammer spring out and then you can start messing with this stuff. So the first thing that I'm going to pull out is the hammer. I'm going to remove this larger pin right here.
Okay, let's take a look at this pin. Looks like it uh, goes in one direction. See we have that flat side there. So we just want to make sure that we take it out this way and put it back in that way. Set that pin aside. Slowly remove our punch in case there's any spring tension in there, which there is. So there's our hammer. And I can see we have our spring in there, trigger return spring. I think I'm going to go ahead and remove the trigger guard also to make this a little bit easier. Because in removing the trigger guard, we should be able to remove the uh, barrel release lug. Make everything easier to get to. Sometimes these single shot actions can be a little bit of a pain to finagle in and out of the receiver. So we want to make as much room as possible. Looks like if you spin this, it'll just unthread. All right, so we've got that out. Next step, let's take the trigger out. Okay, there's our trigger and our engagement back here. Pretty rough, really rough actually. So we're definitely gonna do some work to that. And next we'll take our trigger return spring slash uh, brake action spring. Then we can slide this lock plate or lug, I'm not sure what this is called, slide that out of the way. So that's how it assembles back. So now that we've got all these pieces out, um, we don't need to take out this top pin because it's for the firing pin. So we can set this to the side. All right, so if you look at the way this action works, this is in the fired position. So when you pull the hammer back, it's gonna slide into that notch right there. And then pulling the trigger, we'll release that and let it slide to this position right here. Uh, as long as the trigger is pulled, it should go to this position and continue to strike the firing pin and rebound back into the safe position. Hence the rebounding hammer action, that's how it works. So, cock position, pull the trigger, hit the firing pin, rebound into the safe position. So the engagement surfaces that we want to work on are right here. This face of the trigger right here, and then on the hammer. It's extremely rough in there, and what you want to do is um, take you a sanding file and square up these edges. Uh, you can polish it if you want to, but you've got to be really, really careful. Um, if you mess this part up, you're going to be buying some new pieces. So unless you've done this before, it's a good idea to take it extremely slow. Um, maybe even do a little bit of work, reassemble it, and take it apart again, and keep doing that. Even though it's really time consuming, it'll save you from making a big mistake. Right, what you want to do is polish up the engagement surfaces right in here. You can see I've uh, polished this section just a little tiny bit. And I did it by hand, not using a Dremel. Didn't take off too much material. And then also um, in this crevice right here on the right side edge. So if you do take off any material, make sure you're leaving uh, solid square angles. You don't want anything to be rounded. That's when stuff starts to get dangerous. So um, that's the spots that you need to polish. We're going to get this thing back together and uh, see how it feels. 
All right, I'm going to show you how to put this uh, guy back together once you've got your trigger, trigger components uh, fixed up. First thing you want to do is slide this into place just like that. If you want, you can also pol polish this piece. Um, then you're going to want to put your spring in the uh, little circle cutout there. See that? So spring is going to go in there slide into place. So you can see I've polished this thing up. Hammer's going to go in like this and then this little nub here is going to go in the uh, open end of the spring to keep it in position. So slide it in place like that and then push forward to make sure you've got the spring uh, captured on that nub. And then what I like to do is use the punch size that you drove the pin out with, stick it in place to uh, capture the hammer there. Okay, so that's in place. <clears throat> and then what you want to do is keep the hammer depressed so the spring isn't moving around. Turn it over like this. Let me move my camera back a little bit. And use one of these holes to slide the punch through. Then we can put our hammer pin in place and chase that uh, chase that pin through, or that punch, I mean. There we go. And we can finish it off. A little bit more. All right, and you can see the uh, spring just came out, but it's not a big deal. You can put it back into place with the trigger still in. All right, next step is going to be um, putting the hammer back in place. Hammer's going to go in like this. Hammer's going to go in just like that. And you can use the same trick here, uh, putting a punch in through the back side like this to keep everything in place. All right, so I've got my punch keeping the hammer in place. Now I'm going to chase it down with the pin. All right. We can drive the pin into place the rest of the way. All right, put our hammer spring back in and tighten it down to the uh, depth that we marked earlier for a good primer ignition. Okay, right at seven pounds, but the trigger feels a whole lot better. So we weren't really going for uh, lightening of the trigger when we polished those surfaces. What we were going for is a better trigger pull, and uh, I think we definitely got that here. So trigger really doesn't have any any pre-travel at all. Just got a nice clean break with no uh, creep or mush or grit. So it feels pretty good. Let's get some Loctite on this uh, screw back here and get it all back together. Okay, now that we've got our trigger figured out, we've got everything polished inside, and um, now I've got the trigger pulled down to six and a half pounds. I took it apart again and uh, went ahead and polished a few more things. I should have videoed it, but I didn't, so let me show you what I did. Uh, I've already got this screw locked in place, so I'm not going to take it out. But you want to take this piece of spring steel and polish the underside. See where it meets the tang here on the receiver? Just buff it out. Um, this is what I like to use. Mother's a mag aluminum polish. Buff it out with a Dremel. Make it nice and smooth. You can also buff out this part of the receiver. And then you want to uh, polish the upper side of the spring where it uh, meets the hammer here. 
So you want to polish that side. You can also polish the part of the hammer that uh, meets the spring here, and it'll give you a lot easier glide. And actually, just from dry firing this thing about a hundred times here on the bench, um, the hammer steel started to deform and actually would get caught on the hammer spring. I'd pull the hammer and nothing would happen because uh, it was caught on the hammer spring. The edge of the hammer was starting to deform, so that's kind of crappy, but whatever. So now we've got the trigger figured out. The next thing that we can do is go ahead and uh, start to polish up some of the rest of the action pieces. So this is the pin and screw uh, that hold the barrel in place on the pivot here on the front. So what you want to do, you can see I've already done it here, is uh, take this pivot collar and what I like to do is use some 1500 grit sandpaper and some oil and polish it up really good. That's going to make uh, the action a lot smoother when you're breaking it open. One thing that you can do is you can chuck it in a drill like this, just barely, but then you've got to be uh, really careful as far as the speed and the pressure that you put down on the pin. So let's move on to the receiver and see what we can clean up here. You see all the machine marks, um, but they're really not too rough. A little bit of sharp edges here on the side. Not going to be too big of a deal as far as the action's concerned. Take a look down here. And uh, you can see a little piece of extra metal hanging off. Let's get that out of there. Clean up that edge a little bit. I don't think there's going to be too much to work on inside here. Everything looks pretty good. I'd rather leave the receiver alone if I can. And if there's any polishing that needs to be done, we'll do it to the barrel. But everything in here looks pretty good. Um, with this pivot pin polished up, we could put some uh, molly grease on it when we put it back in here, and it should improve the brake action feel a whole lot. So one thing I noticed that was pretty rough, this, uh, not it's not an extractor, but I guess um, maybe a, oh, well, I don't know, maybe it is an extractor, just not an ejector. So this shotgun doesn't have the feature where it shoots the shells out, but it does push them out so you can grab them. And it's pretty rough moving back and forth here. And you can see the machine marks all around here. They're not that great. It's pretty, pretty rough. Um, but it looks like if I apply upward or downward pressure on this thing, even left to right is when it catches the most. And down inside there, this uh, pin piece is machined really roughly. So I think if we uh, take it out, take this pin out here and polish that up, it should improve the feel um, of that pin a whole lot. I think we're going to leave these edges alone and just grease them. I'm going to drive this pin out the same direction I've been driving all the pins out. And since there's not a uh, ejector here, there should not be a spring inside. On typical brake action shotguns, you have to worry about um, a spring inside there and pushing that ejector and holding it in place while you put the pin in. It can be quite a pain. So, let's take a look at this here. Pretty rough looking. I can feel the machine marks with my fingernail all the way up and down. And some kind of nasty looking grease on there from the factory. Um, I really don't want to sand this thing because it needs to maintain a really solid uh, close fit. So I think I'm just going to polish it up and uh, take out these rough edges here. I'm going to use this 1500 grit sandpaper and some oil again. And I'm going to go, it's going to be time consuming, but I'm going to go uh, forward and backwards since the lines that I'm trying to get rid of are going this way. So it's going to take some time, but uh, just going to apply a little bit of pressure and work back and forth on this until it's nice and smooth. Alright, I've got this piece uh, cleaned up a whole lot. What I ended up doing was using 600 grit sandpaper first because it's pretty hard steel and the 1500 was taking really a long time. But now I can run my fingers along it and I don't feel all those ridges anymore. So uh, 600 grit sandpaper, took me about mm, 7 minutes 
and then finished it up with some 1500 and some oil. This thing feels a whole lot better. I touched the edges just a tiny bit also with that 600 grit because you can see all those machine marks are pretty rough. Next we have this piece right here and this um, works with the extractor back and forth so um, to take your shells out and the way it works is it rides right here and it moves like this so what you can do is polish up the inside of these rails here because they're pretty rough and they actually do create a good bit of drag so you can polish these inside rails see how rough they are inside there polish all these inside surfaces clean them up give it a smoother surface okay we've got everything polished up went ahead and uh, shined this piece up a good bit on all the sides and especially inside on the edges here so for this piece I'm going to use uh, grease instead of oil just put some molly grease on here Get a nice little coating and then wipe off the excess. Do the same thing on this pin. Get a good grease coating on there. I'm going to put grease here on the edges and then I'm going to wipe it off because that would get dirty really quickly. So that pretty much uh, sums up the action and the trigger job on the SS-12 or Hatfield model shotguns. I'm going to put some grease here uh, around this ring and a little bit on the sides and that's going to be it. I'm going to go uh, shoot this thing on the next video, see how it performs. I'm going to shoot a variety of different loads through it, some birdshot, some slugs, see what the patterning is like with a short 20 inch barrel without a choke. If you have any questions on what you saw in the video today as far as modifications, put it in the comments. Thanks for watching.